All right, so uh, in the previous session, we, we just took a look at objective of a seed that is impairment of assets. How does it come that uh, we have to write down our assets? You find out that the value at which you have recorded an asset is actually much more than what you can recover, meaning that um, the asset has been overstated. So trying to overcome that issue of overstatement of assets in the statement of financial position, we impose impairment just like this. So uh, we took a look at scope, then definitions, then we, we, went, we went further uh, to take on how to compute the recoverable amount, which is either you sell the asset and obtain fair or less cost to sell, or you use it for the future. So you compute the present value of future cash flows. And we did an example. But with the example we did, uh, we actually did not compute value in use of fair or less cost to sell the values we are given. And let's, let's just take a look at that question. Uh, there is one question here, this one. We just did question number one. We are given net realizable value, which is fair value less cost to sell. We are also given value news. And today I just want us to go further to an example, which uh, requires us to compute the net realizable value as well as the value news by ourselves. I hope you're getting, you're getting it. So, uh, Let's just go directly for this and see where uh, we end up. Let's go to example number two here. This uh, is an example from ACC exam exams uh, that's come from June 2012. Actually, we start with explanations and then we go to a calculation, part B. The explanation says that the objective of the impairment of assets is to prescribe the procedure that an entity applies to ensure that its assets are not impaired. Required, explain what is meant by an impairment review and your answer should include reference to assets that may form a cash generating unit. Don't worry about cash generating unit, we're gonna see it uh, later after checking in the reverse of impairment and then we'll go to cash generating unit. So let's go directly here. Oh, simply speaking, by saying impairment review, I think we spoke about this. By saying impairment review, actually, it means computing the recoverable amount, going for the recoverable amount. Getting the recoverable amount, you have two ways, either to, to sell an asset and to obtain fair value less cost to sell, or to use the asset now and in the future, so that you compute the present value, which we call value news. Mm -hmm. But when do you perform the impairment review? Computing these values is very right. difficult. In the paper, it looks like simple, but it's not simple because having to, to forecast the cash flow that can be generated by an asset at the end of year one, at the end of year two, at the end of year three, it's not easy, it's not an easy task. So impairment review generally is only performed when there are indicators of impairment, which you saw above. We saw that there are indicators of impairment, internal and external. If you happen, if you are not there, you just go to your YouTube channel and check them. But we saw them indicators of impairment, except, and we say that except for some asset, that is, for example, we say goodwill acquired on a business combination that is on consolidation of financial statements, intangible assets with indefinite useful life, but also intangible asset, the use of which, the future use of which has not yet been established. So we did it that way. So that's an exception. And so uh, if you need much more explanations, you can go uh, to the solution. I put the solution down here after this question, this number A, A here, as you see it, A. Let's just go to B, that involves the calculation. All right, so let's go to B. What does B requires? If you, if you read actually, it's a long question, but getting down, getting down and getting down, uh, you find that what is the requirement? The requirement is calculate the carrying amount of assets in Roman 1 and Roman 2. As we saw above, uh, there are two Romans. At the first March 2012, after applying any impairment losses, calculations should be to the nearest $1,000. I think uh, we're together. So we need the carrying amount is at the first March 2012. Mm -hmm. If there are impairment, we have to account for that. So that's what we're going to do right now, right? So uh, we are just going here. Let's start with number one here. Someone uh, said that our network has gone down, so 
she has texted me in WhatsApp. Her network is low. Let's just proceed. The question says, Telepath acquired an item of plant at a cost of $800,000 on 1st April 2010. Remember that we have to complete the impairment uh, on 31st March 2012. That means two years later. So first of all, the plant was acquired at this figure. That is used to produce and package pharmaceutical pills. That's none of our business. All we know is this one. We have this cost at 1st April 2010. And then you're told that the plant had an estimated residual value of 50,000 and an estimated life of five years, neither of which has changed. So this residual value as well as the estimated life of five years hasn't changed. It, this was April 20, this was April 10, 1st April 10, 2010. But now maybe it's 2012, but we are told that that has not changed. So uh, it shouldn't be much of a big deal. We could just proceed, right? So here we are told that uh, the residual value of the asset is $50,000 here. The residual value of the asset, $50,000. And we are told the estimated life, is if life of the asset is five years. And then we are told that Telepath was informed by a major customer who buys products produced by the plant that it would no longer be placing orders with Telepath. What does this mean? Hey, this is really an indicator of impairment. Someone, a major customer, who buys products produced by the plant that it would no longer be placing orders with Telepath, this threatens uh, the cash generating ability of that asset of this plant because uh, the plant is used uh, to produce goods which are sold to customers and the major customer is with the drawing. So it indicates that uh, the cash flows will decrease significantly and this indicates uh, an impairment loss. So we are further told that even before this information was known, Telepath had been having difficulty finding work for this plant. So even before that major customer, Telepath was also was already finding difficulties uh, in having use for, uh, for this plant. So the plant was almost failing to generate cash flows, another indicator of impairment. And then we are told that it now estimates that net cash inflows carried from the plant for the next three years will be. So these are estimations of cash flow. So as I told you, when computing impairment loss, we compare the carrying amount to the recoverable amount. The recoverable amount includes several less cost to sell as well as value news. Value news takes cash flows uh, further in the further years, in the future years, and then it discounts it to the current year, the, the year in question actually. So we are told that in the next three years, this is what we'll obtain. Remember, today and right now, we are on 31st March 2012. This was 31st March 2012. And the question itself requires carrying amount is at this date. So we are told that one year later, which is 31st March 2013, this is the cash flow that will be generated. Another year later, 180, and another year later, 170. These are the cash flow, future cash flows of the asset. So you expect to obtain these cash flows. But also at the end, after using the asset, you usually have an option to sell. So if you sell it, you gather more cash flows. So just like that. And then let's proceed. Proceeding here, we are told that on 31st March 2015, which is the last year, the plant is still expected to be sold for its estimated realizable value. We are told that its estimated realizable value was 50,000. We are told, well, here, this one, it was 50,000. So we just proceed with it. And then you are told that Telepath has confirmed that there is no market in which to sell the plant at 31st March 2012. Hey, no market. No market means that you cannot obtain fair value less cost to sell. Because if there is no market, there is no fair value. So if no fair value, that fair value less cost to sell will be of no use. And so we are just going to ignore it. And here we are told telepath cost of capital is 10% and the following values should be used. All right, see this, this is the cost of capital. Usually if you, you are given cost of capital, no, you, no need to be given these values. These values are actually discount factors. You know, if you are going through, if you have gone through time value of money to obtain the discount, if you take the discount factor and multiply the future value to obtain the present value. So at the end of year one, which is 2013, 0 0.91, 
year 2.83 and year 3 0 0.75 just like that so we are we have been provided with all the data that we need so we can just go and compute the impairment loss if any so let's go to the solution now remember the cost to the, the asset was bought for eight hundred thousand dollars on 1st April 2010 with a residual value of 50 with a residual value of 50 as well as the estimated life of five years right yeah so uh, we can just proceed now let's go to the solution yeah here we are as I said to know that there is an impairment loss or not you compare the carrying amount uh, to the recoverable amount So we first of all have to determine these amounts and then you will see if there is an impairment or loss or not And, and we say there is an impairment if carrying amount exceeds the recoverable amount by the difference So how do you obtain the carrying amount? Obtaining the carrying amount is pretty easy so Because I will just know that at first April 2010 we had the cost of, of an asset at $80,000 so at is at that, that first March 2012, two years have passed, so we have to reduce to decrease uh, the, the cost of the asset by actually a uh, depreciation of two years. So, compute depreciation per annum using the straight line method. You have eight thousand dollars minus the residual value, which is fifty thousand over five that's the useful life, ending up with one fifty thousand. So, after ending up with five with one fifty thousand, you compute the accumulated depreciation for two years. That is for the year uh, 2011 and 2012. So for the first March 2012, I mean 150 times two and you obtain 300,000. So what will be the carrying amount? Carrying amount equals to cost minus accumulated depreciation. So the carrying out the cost is actually $800,000 minus $300,000, $300, ending up with $500,000. So this is your uh, actually your carrying amount. And after having your carrying amount, you go further. You go further to the recoverable amount. The recoverable amount has, there are two options here. Because uh, if you have an asset and you need to recover something, it's either you use it and recoup what uh, is expected to be obtained from the cash flow in the future, or you sell it and obtain fair value less cost to sell. So you take the better option. That's why we say we take the higher, the higher of value in use and fair value less cost to sell but we are told that there was no market for the asset so no fair value so this figure here this five dollars cost to sell will be of no use so we just use value in use that's why I proceed with value in use i hope you are together on this so value in use just means the present value of future cash flows so you compute the present value of future cash flows just like this so it's very easy if you just need to obtain the present value of future cash flows, you just take future cash flows, you, you multiply by the discount factor, which we are given already in the question. Let's go back to the question so that we see clearly. Uh, this is our, all right, sorry. This is our question. So the first year from the date of measurement, from the date uh, we, we consider our impairment was $20,000, but we are told that the, this, this is the discount factor. Telepath cost of capital is 10% and the following values should be used. You have to learn. If you are given values like this one, these are discount factors. Actually, let's go and let me show you how they have been obtained. These values have been obtained this way. It's just very easy to obtain them. Simply speaking, if you need to, if you need to obtain the present value, ooh, what's this? If you need to obtain the discount factors, we use that formula one over one plus R power N, where R equals to 10% or 0 0.1. And if you plug that one, everything just stays all right. So uh, let's proceed. So you take two twenty thousand dollars times 0 0.91 for the first year, then 180 thousand times 0 0.83 the second year, then 170 thousand times 0 0.75. But these are just cash flows and operations. These are just cash flows and operations. You expect to sell it. We are told that the telepath has confirmed that there is no market value for which to sell the asset. But here, the plant is still expected to be sold for its estimated reliable value. 
So that value that we, at which we failed to sell the asset, which was 50,000 as a residual value, is still relevant. And so we will also take that value, which is 50,000, and multiply it with this figure here, 0 0.75. So let's go to the solution. We are here. So just like this, to obtain the present value, 220 times 0 0.91 for the first year, 180,000 times 0 0.83 the second year, and 170,000 times 0 0.75 the third year. But after this one, we, saw, we could also sell the asset at 50,000, which is a realizable value times 0 0.75, and end up with this figure here. So just like this, you have your value in use, and since you, there is no fair value, actually this value in use is the recoverable amount. And then you compare. So what was your carrying amount? $500,000. What can you recover? 514. That means that there is no impairment. You have recorded your asset at $500,000, but actually you could recoup more than what you recorded, so there is no impairment loss. So no need to make changes. That's why we are saying that at 31st March 2012, the value in use of the plant is $514,000, which is greater than its carrying amount. This means that the plant is not impaired, no impairment of the plant. If uh, you can recover more than what is recorded in the financial statements. So we are told even, even without considering the value of the fair value as cost to sell, because it's obviously actually to, to them that this is, not, uh, this is not important. So just like that, and you obtain things like that. Now, let's suppose that the value in use was $450,000. Had it been $450,000, what would have been? The, co the carrying amount would be $500,000, but you could recoup only $450,000, meaning that uh, there would be an impairment of uh, $50,000. $500,000 minus $450,000. I think this is great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And now uh, what is left is, uh, is for you to, uh, to go to something else that's called reversal of impairment. There are moments at which you have to reverse the impairment loss. Before impairment of a CGU, we'll first take a look at reverse of impairment. You know, sometimes you have to reverse the impairment. Something happened, you, you, you performed the impairment review and you, you wrote down the asset. You decrease it of its value but also when something improves you could also raise back the value of the asset depending on the situation actually but also there is there will be a cap that will be placed so uh for today i think we, we could just end up here and let's see each other uh, the next time thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe subscribe and also you can also share this channel to others uh so that uh much more people uh, benefit from this, all right? Uh, have a good night.